Hello everyone, and welcome back at long last to Voices of the Void. It's been quite a while since I played to the end of the available events in this game, and I really came to love this as something that is simultaneously creepy, comfy, and just an experience that wants you to live in it. To immerse you in every aspect of all that this job entails, and in doing so, making it feel like it's your own life in danger when you hear a rustling in the bushes outside or see a strange light in the sky. It's a game that is able to emphasize the little things to make the big things stand out all the more. And from what I understand, this has just received a huge new update, <laughs> even referring to it as super experimental. And you'll see that we do still have access to our previous save, which ended on day 49. And of course I backed this up, and the game does have neat features where we can reset only parts of it to try and restore compatibility. And I don't know if I'm going to try and do that, but for now, I'm definitely not going to because one of the major things that's always stuck out to me about this game is night one. Arriving at our post in the dead of night, having to walk our way through this unfamiliar place to our unfamiliar new place of work that will uh, eventually become our safe haven. And that safe haven has been overhauled in this update, so it really will be unfamiliar again. Oh wow, even the gate has been changed. No longer a fence, but a whole booth. Ooh. What was that? It's like something just like shattered or snapped right next to me. And I'm already seeing shooting stars in the sky. Wait, can we get inside the booth? No, I don't think there's... I don't think we're even able to step foot off this property, although there is a drive in there. Yeah, I just reloaded a save specifically to see. That wasn't something breaking due to physics over here. Something just, like, shot up out of the ground. God, this game actually managed to get a jump scare just in the beginning. Not sure if it's a bug or not. But first things first, let's uh, have a look what's in our bag. We've got our Earth Altar plush, some toilet paper, a battery, an MRE, and our certificate. Showing we are qualified to do this job, almost like we've done it before. So let's pick this up and begin making our way all the way to the base. Alone. In the dark. Wait, no, 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 something was like spraying out of the water. Or it was like something sprayed at me and then hauled back across and crawled into the other side. Okay, something really weird is going on here. Is that spooky ambiance new? Oh boy, just follow the path. Just follow the path. Uh, if we... I was going to say if we get to some higher ground, we might be able to see the tower outside of our base, but I, I don't know how much this world has changed. I had grown so accustomed to it. Oh, there we are. Uh, wait, can we still zoom in? Nope. Ow, that's the pratfall button. There we are. There's our tower and something... Something is crashing about out there. I, I love this introduction because it has you so absolutely vulnerable. The most this game has to do is nothing because it knows that by making you feel like you're there, that's how it makes the events seem to matter so much. Make them few and far between and for the most part, it's just the same feeling as when you've just read a creepypasta and you're all alone in your room on a stormy night. 
it starts off by not even giving you the comfort of walls and a light switch and a bed. You've got to earn that as your very first job. The sign says base this way. But I don't know quite how long it's going to take me to get there. I do have more batteries in my bag. But maybe we should pick up the pace just a little bit. Alright, getting closer. The gl glow from that tower is a sight for sore eyes. I don't think that's the sound of pine cones dropping either. That sounds like something substantially heavier. Oh, and are those... Uh, yeah, there's power lines. I don't know if the rest of the base has been overhauled or just the building. But I guess we're going to find out. Even the movement of the power lines gently swaying in the breeze is enough to make me nervous. Get that rock out of the road. It, it may not seem... Actually, wait, how do I drop this? Okay. Alt R, stop making that noise. Let's... Oh, we can't get this rock out of the road. I was going to say I want to make this easier for my ATV. And there's the base, but... It's looking real different these days. We've got... Dumpsters outside. Anything we can maybe salvage from them? No. Now we've got to find the way in. Uh, there's the garage door to the ATV bay. Which has got a window all its own now. And here's the side ramp. Although I can see they've left it quite a pigsty, as always. The more things change, the more they stay the same. It's, it's like exploring, like, the abandoned labs under Chernobyl or something. Uh, let's read this. Password 1111. But it doesn't really matter right now, because the doors are open from the start. Yep, there's the bunker still sitting over there. And there is the bay window that will become our workspace. Ooh, and the telescope's been moved to the roof, quite fittingly. Any mail for us to read? Any procrastinations in here so that I can delay my exploration of this place? Alright, well, let's get to it then. Let's leave this in the corner here. Oh no, is that not working? Ah, uh, that's the porch light. Let's people know someone's home. Okay, well then we've got to find the interior light. Why do we have to have these things? Maybe it's to make it feel staffed. Uh, we've got like a we've got like a commissary over here. Ooh, a drink machine that'll keep me sane, at least until it runs out of inventory. But is there really no light switch in this hall? Okay, that's a little freaky. Uh. Parking brake isn't on, but but why did it wait until I got here to start rolling forward? Look, there's an elevator in the back of the bay. Let's turn this on. There's the garage door. I wonder if we can close this one. And this does not open with 1111. Alright, we'll keep that in mind. Maybe it's listed somewhere. Here is what's to become our new workplace. Oh my, it looks so bare. I mean, it's filthy, but I don't know. I'm so used to having those comforting walls lining the edges coming in here. Those walls that previously made me look around and feel like things were glancing at me from around corners. 
but somehow this feels so much more like I'm a bird in a cage or a goldfish in a bowl. Uh, we've got some fuel in this can here. An old drive port here. Wow, that is really janky and old. Well, we don't have any garbage bags right now, so let's just start tossing this stuff off, and as soon as we're set up here, we'll get to work. Oh, I see. <laughs> the server racks have been moved back here, meaning all we've done is confine the blind corners. Oh, that's a whole new room for me to be nervous in. Remind me to check the lockers for killers later. A staircase going upstairs. And a storage closet, which we don't need to worry about right now. Uh, and here is the break room. That doesn't look like soda spilled from the can. Hang on, come on. I'm trying to do this without knocking you over, but no. No hidden secret back here. Alright, I'll try and hoist you back up, but I'm using a lot of battery here. Alright, well, I'll tell you what. In the interest of saving battery, I'll wait until morning to start searching for that light switch, which actually is only a couple of hours from now. In the meantime, let's uh, get this computer started. Start looking for some voices of the void. E. Uh, what is that exactly? A piece of organic trash. Okay, well, I'm not that desperate yet. And let's check our email. Hello, I'm Dr. Bao. I'll be responsible for your daily tasks. In short, I'll ask you to do a quick task at the start of every day. First, I'll request a specific amount of drives. These can range from level 0 to level 3. I understand your situation, however, and will not request a drive you can't obtain. The second task I will ask of you is a simple satellite checkup. Go to the satellite, type in SV hash into the server, and write down the server and number in a note. Once you've done that, attach it to the lid of the drive box and send it off with the drone. I've left a little notebook on the table that you can tear pages out of. As usual, you'll get a nice point bonus if you complete these for me. Have a nice day or night wherever you are. Dr. Bao. And Professor Lee says, Welcome to your new job, Dr. Kell. My name is Leah, your main supervisor. You probably got through the learning period, but I'll remind you what your job is and what to do. In short, your job is basically scanning the sky for anomalous signals. That is your main task. Another task is to process the data of these signals and send us the data stored on analog drives. You'll get a reward for each drive, and if you process the signal on further levels, you'll get more points. Next task is to look after these big satellite dishes, its servers, and calibration. You can recalibrate satellites remotely through the console panel, but if the satellite server shuts down, you have to manually fix it. The server is inside the satellites. Alright, I think that's it. The nuclear reactor is not implemented yet, so you don't need to worry about that. Gather the signals, process them, sell results to us, look after the satellites, and that's it. Good luck. And good luck we shall need. But the sun is rising. The power lines are doing something really, really funky. Now for returning viewers, the reason I'm reading all this out is because I want this video to be accessible to newcomers. But there we go, we've got a successful ping. And now those satellites out there will begin rotating in order to face where that signal is coming from. And once we get there, we'll have to set everything up so that we can begin downloading it. Now, in the meantime, I believe I did see a downed server, a couple of them now. Uh, so there we go. 7 plus 6 is 13. I believe I remember how to do this. Uh, 12. 1 minus 7 is negative 6. Basically, whatever the last digit of the answer is, that's what you want to put in. There we go. Oh, they changed the sound. It's much, much less satisfying now. I mean, it's much less overtly, you did it. 
All right, and it looks like that is ready to begin collecting. And ooh, I just noticed we've got some text above the window. Maybe something we're meant to keep in mind at all times. Cosmic gulfs it throws open before our frenzied eyes. Well, that's the idea, isn't it? To row open the veil, the void, and gaze within. Alright, so we've got to... Oh, man. Uh, so much of this used to be done automatically that I'm actually going to have to relearn some of this. Change the pol polarity. Oh, well, we actually kind of landed right on it. There we go. And we want to make sure that that's as close to 100% as possible. And here we go. This has got to be like the fourth time I'm restarting Voices of the Void, by the way. Uh, it feels so weird to be back here. Right, there we go. And there we go. And now it's pretty much fire and forget. We just wait for it to download. You can see in the top left, we've gotten our first 10 points for uh, fixing those servers. But we're going to need a whole lot more in the form of sending back information that we download from here and from fixing other satellites and getting their hash codes. But since things are starting to brighten up a bit, uh, maybe we should start looking for where those uh, light switches are. Oh wait, no, we haven't fully explored the base yet. Not only is there an upstairs, but a basement as well. Okay, well we'll save the basement for tomorrow night's game. I think that'll be a fun party game. Look. Oh, this hallway is so cool. Now we've got like an observation deck, like an enclosed patio where we can just sit and watch the rain. And whatever yes! is going on out there. God. Hazing the new guy, huh? Leaving that trap intricately set for me? Uh, and this is where the firefighter pole elevator from the garage goes. Let's toss that trash over there. Now where does this lead? Ah, here is our living quarters. And it seems that the last occupant saw some things. Or at least was a conspiracy nutjob. Uh, now this, I imagine, probably leads out, yep, onto our new balcony. Wow. Why is this simultaneously so much more cozy and spacious, and yet all I can think about is how it's just one more place. Or, or rather, a whole bunch more places for something to hide when we're walking around investigating a noise in the middle of the night. I mean, a free burger is a free burger, right? There we go. And we can get some stamina back by using the toilet. We are going to need to work out a different living arrangement with all you guys. There's so many of you, and if I'm not going to be getting jump scared every single time I walk around, we're going to have to get some things straight. And there's a conspicuous vent cover right over there. Okay, I'm going to start collecting these drives wherever I find them, because they're scattered all over. Because uh, it's going to be pretty important that we don't have to buy things early on. I want to save all the money we can get and use them for upgrades to make this easier. Okay, and this is just a blank book, which is ultra useful, uh, because we'll need those for satellite hash codes. I get it now, this base redesign is just a whole bunch of new angles for you guys to silhouette yourselves against. Awesome. Not only that, I inherited a huge mess from my careless previous co-workers. There's gotta be some kind of light switch in this hallway, right? Maybe it's back there. Uh, over here we've got our radar. But right now it looks like the only contacts are me, the ATV, and probably, I don't know, the tower or the building itself? I'm not sure what the third contact count says, but I've got a whole ton of stuff and a whole ton of work to do. Uh, it looks like this image is starting to resolve, but that's going to take a little while. Hmm, now that we can look out over our surroundings, I see there's an entire parking lot right in front of us. One of them's even labeled Visit. Look, we've got our own tree, but 
I think that means that this facility must be from a bygone era because I don't think anybody's coming this to visit us here. Since we're going to be waiting for this for a while, I think we should probably start by putting things at least as organized as we can get them. So drives will go over on this shelf right here and ooh. Okay, that is quite a neat new feature. It actually stacks them uh, with a number instead of just having each one be its own line. So that is great for organization. And in fact, one of you we can just put right here. Uh, we've also got that gas can, which we can move over to the vehicle bay. This one is also only got 25. I hope this thing is fully fueled at least. 100 it is. So that's good. Oh, and we've got a couple more over here. All right, we're going to be going for a while. Oh, right. Uh, here we have our workbench. And if we look at this, uh, we can see our guide to recycling. Have too much garbage at your house? Want to compress it so it won't take too much space? Recycle your trash into more compact form. The following pages will teach you how to compress trash into something more usable, and it's very easy. We can start using this to get rid of some of the trash that's on the ground. Not this stuff, uh, but more of this stuff. The stuff that we see scattering uh, as individual pieces. Huh, it was one, two, three, four. I'm so happy I was able to guess that, but here... Yeah, this this is the stuff that's really going to help us out early on. Being able to utilize what's here when we can't afford anything new. So let's grab those MREs. Uh, there's a first aid kit, some batteries. Okay, and helpful security guard. You know what? Here we go. There we are. You just man your post, and you're the one recurring jump scare that I will accept. Now you are complete, which will enable us to save signal. And we can download you onto this drive, which is now green. And unfortunately right now, we don't have the ability to process these signals and listen to them. So if we tried it right now, all we'll get is garbled nonsense. Well, I say garbled nonsense, but it definitely sounded like there was something in the middle of that. It's actually kind of creepy, and it's the kind of thing that I'm going to be thinking about when I'm sitting at this desk when night falls. Alright, so we'll save that signal then. And if we go into our computer, we can see, uh, where was it? Database. We've got it saved, and we can copy that to another drive later if need be. Preferably when we can process it. But for right now, this one is complete. And we can get our drive box and bring that over. We'll keep it here for now. Open it up. Remove the lid. There we go. And now we just start up another one. And that's essentially what this job is. You sit here. You listen to the literal sky. And most of the time, what does the guy have to say? Absolutely nothing. Same goes for the forest around us. There's a kind of serenity to it. It's really relaxing. But also, it's got its share of secrets and mysteries, and well, you'll never stop you'll never stop wondering which ratio you're hoping for. Meanwhile, there is something up there. That looks like an MRE in the vent. Also, I swear I just heard something rattling. Okay, there doesn't seem to be anything going on in the server room. Uh, and here we have a basin of water, which uh, I will dub my hot tub. And also some, some uh, moron has been dumping their paper trash in here, leaving it a wet sloppy mess on the bottom. So that's yet another mess for me to clean up. It, it's almost the boredom that makes the, the rest of it stand out. And I've never seen anything else do it in just such a way. 
It, it's the kind of thing that can be terrifying in the job itself, but in the meantime, you'll spend so much of your time just trying to figure out if that really was something you saw in the woods yesterday, or even just throwing stuff at the ceiling, hoping you'll get that free food to fall down. Well, that phased right through. I swear I keep hearing, like, rattling coming from over here. This is daylight, folks. It gets a whole lot worse when night falls, as you previously saw. So much of this is just spent sitting in your chair, watching the woods, and every so often, your mind will just latch on to something that could have been something, but probably wasn't. This place needs cleaning as well, I can see. Uh, but we can regain some stamina. Maybe we'll take a nap today so that we can be alert during the night shift. Ah, uh, there is so much here for us. More MREs, chocolate, a banana, and another of these delicious burgers. Oh, look, we've even got an oven as well. <laughs> and another burger within that oven. Okay, we're actually doing pretty all right, if I do say so myself. This place may be run down and decrepit, but it's yours. And over time, this place that you see as just a dingy work environment starts to reflect you and your tastes and your experiences. Oh my god. I, I did it to myself on purpose, but it's still gonna get me every single time. Melvin, you know, you can sit, right? It's just real weird seeing your silhouette looming at the end of the hallway. And please let me know if my ex-wife comes in here, just tell her I'm not home. We should actually probably bring this upstairs, right? Hang on. Uh, let's take this with us. Might as well actually uh, see how this elevator works, right? There we are. Just wedge you in the corner. <laughs> I don't trust you being right in the corner like that. Uh, there we go. It's nice and slow for safety. There you go. <laughs> I had to have some kind of fun on the way up. And here we are. Okay, so we'll just leave this right here by the foot of the bed, and all should be good. Oh, right. Um, I want to... I want to grab a burger from the fridge. And we'll put that in here. Oh, no power. Uh, we've got to find a spot to plug you in. Right back there should be good. Uh, yep. Uh, there's your power cord. Come on, power cord. Don't tell me you're stuck. Wow, you're actually, like, stuck by default. That's all right. I think we can retract you and just kind of bring you back, right? Come on. Uh, it's, it's just not letting me pick it up for some reason. Wow, did they actually make power cords more glitchy? Nice silhouette you've got there. Look at that. The shadows ominously passing over you. And we're going to need those lights again soon. But back to the workstation. This thing should be long done by now. Uh, very close. Very, very close. Wow, it, I had forgotten just how slow everything goes in the early game. You're detecting something right outside, it seems like. Uh, this thing can have false positives, but I kind of think I should maybe go have a look. I should also be locking my door at night is what I should be doing. I've got to make a note of which things uh, lead to the outside. Uh, is this a garbage can? Let's write you up. A, a big part of the early game here is just going to be, like, getting rid of all this trash. I believe we can sell it for some amount of money, which is good. Wow, look at how tall all this grass is. Like I said, I don't know how much the park itself has changed, but I barely recognize the area the base is in now just because the base itself is so different. Oh, great. They've given us a loading bay for us to accidentally drive off of if we exit at the wrong angle. But I didn't see anything. So let's uh, lock that. 
You'll go in the box, and maybe we can get one more before the day's out. I mean, given the speed of things, I wouldn't count on it, but we can at least get something for it. Our very early points are going to be really, really critical again. It also has a chance to fail. All of this will become much more streamlined as we upgrade, but this early game can be really quite a slog. There we go. Wow, look, with all the dirt on the windows, once it gets dark and you no longer have the definition of the trees, it all just becomes a big black blob that will eventually meld with the sky as it meets it. And then, then that's the worst part, because all you have is pitch black out there, knowing full well that you're completely lit in here, and you just sit here twiddling your thumbs, knowing that anything can see in and you can't see out. But you are starting. Uh, we can actually work you from here, so we don't even have to get up. I kind of wish, like, uh, A and D allowed you to, like, swivel the chair around. That could be a cool thing. Let's see if there's anything broken in here. I'm actually really hoping that some of these things break because I get points for fixing them. But good lord, I'm starting to realize why they changed the server area. It was so calming when it was just a little corner over there, and now... Now I've got to go into the darkened chamber right beside my workplace. It's like a little mini-adventure every time. That being the case, I kind of think we should have a look and see what upgrades are available to us. Now, with only 10 points, we can't afford a lot of these things yet. Uh, so what should be the first thing? We can also buy all kinds of things from the store, and I can see that we've got a lot more now. Electronics, tools, containers... Uh, even wall builders and fixers! That is so cool! We can straight up house flipper this thing! Alright! Ah, oh, they've added, like, construction and everything! Okay, that sound is rising, and it's making me real spooked out. And it's now that I'm realizing we cannot lock any of our interior doors. We've got a contact out there somewhere. Could just be a deer. It could be. Am I going to go out there and find out? Answer, heck no. Oh, but I actually might have to. At midnight, we're going to get our first satellite orders, but uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Well, since we do have to wait for this signal to finish, and there's not going to be much to be done in the meantime, I'm thinking with two hours left to midnight, we'll box these up and get them ready to send out. And then, what do you say, we explore that basement, shall we? Uh, you, I've got to find a light switch for this interior hallway. Uh, so the way we send these things out is we drop this right here, we move this vehicle back, and then there should be a panel over here on the wall from where we can call the drone. No, we can't. Why not? I don't understand why we can't call the drone. Maybe we're not allowed on our first night? Maybe we have to wait for our first orders? I really don't like how my body casts a shadow over the computer at night. At least when the back light is on. Oh, I, I just uh, remembered, I should be checking on the satellite status. I mean, I ain't going out there right now, but here we are. Uh, hang on. What do we do? SV ping. That'll tell us which ones are up and which ones are down right now. Papa is down. There was just a huge explosion somewhere. Uh, did anyone else hear that? A uh, uh, thing is down? Well, I don't see anything, like, burning or anything. It sounded like it came from over on the right here. Alright, let's get this done. Sometimes you just use work to distract yourself. Uh, 6 plus 3 is 9, 9 minus 7 is 2, 4 plus 5 is 9, counting with Chris, 0 minus 9 is negative 9, 8 minus 5 is, was that, 3? And 4 minus 0 is 4. And you're fixed. 
Maybe the first thing I invest in should be garbage bags. But then again, at this stage, I'm not even going to be able to afford a box to send them out in. We've got to make real tough decisions this early on. Uh, but you, you are done. Finished. So we can stick you in there. Uh, save. Save. Grab. Wait, what? Oh, the detector. It's not finished yet. Melvin, you keeping watch? Uh, it could just be the crunch of machinery, but I've got another battery on my person. Let's, uh, let's have a spooky little adventure and head down to the basement, shall we? I really don't like these blinds that they leave around. <laughs> they definitely prime me to expect something scary look. Sealed door at the end of the hall. It's a meat freezer! Why is that here? Why do we need that? Uh, there's no way for us to get in, but it kind of seems like it's probably been rotting down here for quite a long time. In that case, what was that noise? Alright, just checking for killers! My god! I'm um, the protagonist of a horror movie before the killer shows up. That's what it feels like. And somebody is hiding something over here. It's the underside of the stairs, but it looks like there's a crawl space down there. Okay, if, we, if I had a crowbar, I could break that stuff down. Actually, I could do a lot of things if I had a crowbar. But maybe I can... Oh, there's a note in there. Maybe I can use this to break this down. It'll probably take forever, actually. I remember doing this in previous versions. It would take literally upwards of 100 hits. What does this say? Tools to <laughs> break the boxes with. Yeah, well, I remember this being a trap. Alright, the lights do work down here, though, so we'll keep that in mind. And later we'll figure out what's there. Alrighty. Let's see how our signals are going then. Oh my god, every time, every time you come back here, it's like you're coming up for air after diving underwater, you know? Coming back to your brightly lit safe haven. It's so cool how you have like that layer of safety bubble where the outside is the absolute danger and darkness. Inside your base, okay, you're a little better. But upstairs in your room, or in here in the control room, that's when you're at your safest. At least psychologically. Alright, well if we're not sending that thing out tonight, and there's no point in waiting until later, uh, we might as well bring this back then. I mean, I say that these places become your safe haven, but one of the cool things about this is that it's really up to you. I mean, I could pick any room to fortify, but... I mean, is it really any protection? Some things might help you, but for the most part, it's only for your own comfort. All of this is pretty much the equivalent of being left home alone for 15 minutes as a kid, and building a pillow fort while you wait for your parents to get back. Alright, so, do we have any cameras for the time being? None. <laughs> wow, eating a banana leaves behind a peel. That's kind of funny, we're gonna have to leave it for now, though. And going back and forth from one place to another in this... I always feel like Spongebob taking out the trash on the night shift. Just running from one to the next. Yeah, you, you, you keep on keeping out, Melvin. I assume you're there. Actually, it's so much worse when your booth is completely dark and you could be doing anything without my knowing. I eagerly await your email. Cannot determine location. We cannot triangulate your location, Dr. Kell. Please check that all the systems are working properly. Servers, consular, radio tower. The drone will be sent out eventually when we determine your location. Do I have to climb the tower? 
Oh, and we gotta grab three server reports. Uh, that's Uniform, Foxtrot, and X-Ray. Alright, um... I'm low on battery, but I've got another one. Let's do it. There's that tower. Right over there. Oh, it is so dark, but look at those shooting stars. Look, it's a meteor shower. Sometimes you see some incredible things. In fact, we can maybe even get a better view if it's still going on when we get up there. Turning off my flashlight right now to say battery and <laughs> the skies are lighting themselves up in my honor. Maybe it's to congratulate me on such a good first day at work? Well, at least this explains why the drone wasn't able to arrive earlier. And it means a bigger payday once it finally does come. Wow, the sound of the wind just jump scared me. Have a look at that. Alright, uh, so can we do something with this? Status all fine. Alright, so we should be good for that now. Why do you need why do you need this to be this way for my static location? Do you not know where I am? I'll stay here and watch this for a little while longer. I mean why not? <laughs> if I were able to drag my bed up here. Ooh, and somebody left their takeout! Don't mind if I do. I'll, I'll take the rest for later. Who knows how old this stuff is. And it looks like this huge event is starting to peter out a little bit, so... Let's end this on a high note. Such a wide array of emotions this game is able to make you feel, and that's what makes it so special. When you're not expecting to be scared every single moment, the scares are just that much sweeter. Everything is that much sweeter. Oh, and it sounds like the drone is on its way. Uh, I hope it's not... I hope it's not processing my request that I punched in before. It said it wasn't doing anything. Yep, you're landing in the bay. You're going home disappointed. You know, I've never had that happen before. I wonder if it'll actually send a different email. It's not going to be a good first impression, but I'm going to have plenty for them when they get back. So now I've torn off that paper sheet out of the book, so we can look at this whenever we want. Uniform, Foxtrot, and X-Ray. And now we can go in here and use this console, and we can ping each of these places, find out where we need to go, uh, and our compass will point towards it. Uh, we also... We, we want Papa because it's down and we want to fix it. But for now, uh, these things are actually pretty far off. I think there's a diagram somewhere that shows where these things are located. Oh yes, right over here. X-ray's pretty far out. So if we do SB target X-ray, uh, server found, and it's going to point us in that direction. Uh, X-ray is off that way. Okay. Okay, okay. So the plan is I think we'll hit X-ray. On the way back, we'll hit F, then uniform, then swing back to Papa. Actually, wait, a better plan would probably be X-Ray, Papa, Uniform, then Foxtrot, then Home, because then we're heading back. All right, let's uh, do it. It's always simultaneously a cool and terrifying feeling when that garage door opens and you just don't know what kind of stuff you're going to get into out there. Especially as it is our first time, but uh, I see what that drone was doing now. That was our midnight drop-off. Every night we get a free MRE and a free drive. Keeps us going. We've really got to clean this place out, but for the first time, let's ride and experience the freedom that this place offers us, because the base isn't our only home. Technically, this whole place is. And unfortunately, going on the path isn't always the quickest way between locations. I say unfortunately because 
there's at least a perception that there could be many big bad wolves out here. Alright, here we are. So here we are at X-Ray. And let's have a look. There's the gate down there. Imagine how far we've come. Walked all the way back that way. I was trying to make a point there, but you cannot see any of the landscape. All right, so now that we're here, we're going to get this hash code. It's going to generate that for us. And now we will get out our paper sheet. And we'll write that down in the appropriate slot. So 238A, 4F8, F. Five, five. And we're good for now. Uh, and next we're going to SV target Papa, which will set us in the right direction. Well, our batteries went out, so we're going to hold that and R. Wait. There we go. And get the heck out of here. Now you got to come up with a lot of shortcuts in this game. In this case, jumping down from sections of railing that are low enough to land safely on the hills next to it. See, the thing about this ATV is it comes as kind of a double-edged sword, doesn't it? I mean, on the one hand, it can be really freeing. The mobility and the big light on the front definitely a lot safer than having to walk all the way here, but at the same time, having the wind at your back means that you're exposed to the open air. That if something wanted to grab you as you drive past its favorite tree, this thing would continue rolling forward and you'd never be seen or heard from again. If you're lucky, somebody will find the rusted ATV one day. But it always does bring some sense of relief to see the morning sun rising as you're out here. Look at the way these trees appear one by one on the edge of your headlights. It's like I'm registering a new object in front of me every second, and I keep feeling like something is going to subvert the expectation that the next one will be a tree. Like sooner or later there will be some humanoid figure that goes by in the blink of an eye, and by the time I can even register it, it's gone. Let's get up here. Now this one is not one of the hash codes I need to collect. This one is just down. Ah, and we finally just have a light switch in these things. I am so happy that's been fixed. Used to be if the power went out, these things were just gone forever. All right, but more math problems. Eight minus zero, eight is zero. Nine plus six is 15. Six minus three is three. Nine plus four is 13. Two minus eight is negative six. Zero minus three is negative three. Eight minus four is four. And nine minus five is four. And the satellite is back online, and everything is working at full capacity again. Oh wait, I can see up ahead... There is one of these transformer boxes. So there are three transformers powering this facility. And every once in a while they need a little jolt to keep them going. Right now you're at 90%. None of these things are going to be going down anytime soon. I'll also collect this fuel from right here. Thank you very much. But it's always good to top them off whenever you're here. I don't believe they need fuel to function unless that's something that's changed, uh, but you do need to hit that reset button, preferably whenever you're in the neighborhood. And here we are, arriving at Uniform, and... I could swear I just heard something moving in the bushes. Okay, I'm gonna... I'm gonna hurry this up. See, we're actually at that just wrong time. 
where you're actually harder to see and see things than if it was just the dead of night. Because look at this contrast. Your eyes do not know how to adjust. Never is the black blacker than <laughs> during that precise moment of dawn. All right, so SV hash. And there's our new code. And I cannot wait to get out of here. Honestly, if it were me in this situation and I had just heard that, I would probably just be cowering in the corner here until the sun is fully up. But we don't really have time for that. Our character is exhausted. Wow, well, look at that. <laughs> this game just gets more and more gorgeous every single time it's updated. Seeing that glow just, like, cast over the entire place. Everything that was so, like, shrouded in darkness and spookiness just becomes so much more inviting. It, it makes the outdoorsman in you really appreciate this. And that's what makes this so special. I think it's so much to do with the fact that, like, everything is something different in different contexts. Every aspect of this game. But I believe I did see something over there. I don't know if that's just the fence at the edge of the property, or if it's like something penned in. It's kind of hard to tell. Not that I really had the means to do anything about it in this early game, so let's just head for our final target. Getting all this stuff done early is going to be a huge infusion to our points. And getting a good early start means you're going to avert a lot of the death spiral that can happen later on. If you don't manage yourself well early on, you'll find that you're always hungry, you're always tired. But keeping on top of all that stuff gives you much more room to adventure, and you are going to want to adventure. I mean, hey, the universe is our playground, right? We're trying to answer life's great questions. And do some maybe cryptid hunting while we're at it, because the scope of this game knows no bounds. It just gives you so many different things to look at. There's spookiness from the stars, spookiness from the woods around you, spookiness from within your own home base. And it's always the one you're not looking at that tends to surprise you at the most inopportune moment. But it's always appreciated. It's a job that rewards the curious, and as such, it's a game that rewards the curious. Right, so 05FDF2343. Also, I believe you can now SV target Alpha, which is your base, and that will lead you home. And I'm pretty sure I saw the compass jitter a little bit. Yep, it is pointing home. That used to not be the case. I think it was changed in the last version. Uh, but by that time, I was so used to not having that opportunity. But in contrast to the spooky, the spookiness that we ventured out in, we now have quite a delightful morning drive back home. And it's not a very far drive either. Man, it looks so official, doesn't it? This mess of concrete cubes. Little does anyone know how informal this whole process actually is. And rather than turn around, I find it's better to just pick this thing up and drop it. Plop it down right there. Uh, make sure to always eat the wild mushrooms. Believe me, they're harmless. And thanks for holding down the fort, Melvin. Ooh, you've got outlets back there. Can I charge my phone? And during the day, I think it's fine to turn these lights off. I like moody lighting better than harsh lighting, but harsh lighting can be just the cure when you don't feel safe in your own place. Anyway, we're going to drop this paper here, and that is going to end up being sent out with the drives. Oh, and you're done as well. We are exhausted, but now that we've got another signal processing, I think I'm actually going to save that for tomorrow, because I find that it's actually better to get ahead of yourself and leave some stuff today, the excess from today, for tomorrow's job order. 
because extras are extra, but having the free time to know that you're going to meet that absolutely important deadline is worth all the money in the world. So now we can call that and bring the drone in. And I would like to sleep right away, but come on, I know you want to watch the drone come. It's our first night. And here it comes. I'm telling you, that sound is always just heavenly. And you will come on down. Let's see if you still do your really weird animation. The ceiling is higher now, I think. And you'll pick it up, and away you go! You still found a way to be like a crazy dragonfly. The movement shouldn't be possible, but I love it. Uh, but I am extremely eepy. And this, this lazy ride isn't helping. So let's get to bed, sleep the day away so we can toil the night away. And I really hope I did those reports right, because one typo, and we do not get the full amount. Let's get to bed. And hope for sweet dreams. There's like a fog falling over the base. Hang on, I kind of want to... Uh, it's kind of passing by, but... Are, are there some new weather effects in this game? Because if so, that's really awesome. Uh, and there's our there's our points, and we got quite a lot for such an early game. Uh, we can put that to some great use. And things are only going to get better from here, but it sounds like things are moving about, and I don't like it. All right, let's uh, let's get a head start on the day then, and start queuing up our next signal because the next one should be just about available by now. There we are, looking good. So let's grab you. And uh, another cool trick: once we upgrade these signals and gain the ability to process them further and hear them more clearly, uh, we can actually go back and resell the same signals that we have saved at a higher level. Uh, the game is kind of quirky like that, but it's certainly helpful to us. No matter how many times I input a command, I just never get tired of seeing those big giants that surround me turn to do their thing. It's crazy, this place is so run down and so understaffed and so dirty, and yet there's just such a grand sense of scale and importance to all this. Kind of makes me wonder what everyone's priorities are. This can feel like the most boring and simultaneously the most exciting job in the world, depending on the day. Alright, 4 minus 2 is 2, 0 plus 8 is 8. This is one of those boring moments, counting with Chris. Uh, not enough data. These are okay, but our systems can't recognize anything useful. Try to find something more interesting than that. Well, first of all, it's not up to me, and second, these computers suck. Uh, package successfully delivered, and there's all of our jobs being completed. Uh, so we have a lot, especially after fixing more servers, that we can upgrade. So of course, first things first, is going to be processing level. Uh, meaning we're actually going to be able to double dip, even triple and quadruple dip on everything we've gotten so far. Uh, and everything else, I'm not quite sure. Now, I see they've also added an upgrade for transformer stability. So, if we upgrade that fully, we could also make it so that the transformers don't go down quite as often. So, that's a neat addition. Uh, let's see. What can we buy in the store? Seems like the food is more or less the same. Any interesting new tools? Well, uh, we've got a knife. Why do we need a knife? A swatter? Are we going to be infested with bugs? I'll tell you what, we might as well start working on cleaning this place up. And don't worry, we are going to profit from this. Uh, we are going to have so much garbage, and investing in that early is probably going to be for the better. So if I can just figure out where we're keeping the item box right there. Oh, Max Cart, we have to, we have to order it by itself, which is kind of annoying. Oh, wow. And sometimes you look up from your computer and realize you don't know where the time's gone and it's gotten so dark so quickly. Relatable, am I right? 
right, but that is downloading. So far it's been the detector that takes the longest, so maybe we'll put points into that first. And it definitely picks something up at one point, but not anymore. There's a four, an ominous four in the history. You know what? You've got your own light. I think you're going to stay on at all times. Uh, because, to be honest, you're doing a similar job to me. Ooh, there's switches under here. And I'd feel bad otherwise. Uh, I don't know what... Oh, these are the hallway lights. Cool. I thought they might be in here. Well then, you're, you're doing good at this job. Stay here and you might be in for a management position. Oh, it's started to rain. All right, well, let's, uh, let's go view that from here. Wow, this place is so open that the misty, moist air just saturates the entire place. It makes it even harder to see out the window. Interestingly enough, unless we press our face right against the glass, which is not something I'm exactly eager to do. Let's have some more of our radar take out. <laughs> and just leave it on the ground. My god, we're becoming our co-workers. Still, we should be able to do at least something with the trash that's here. And from that, we can make plastic scrap, which all combines, not only condensing the stuff, uh, but we can also sell it once that item box arrives, which, by the way, where's the item box? Didn't we order it? Cannot determine location. We cannot triangulate your location, Dr. Kell. Please check that all the systems are working properly. This is going to be a thing now? This is going to be a whole thing. That's not just like a startup thing. And this just keeps inventing reasons why I have to run out in the rain in the middle of the night and climb a stupid tower. Let's go. No meteor shower, no, not even stars in the sky to accompany me this time, just the black void surrounding me. Which eventually gives way to the red light <laughs> bouncing off of the fog. There's a lot more threatening than last night. Am I gonna have to do this daily? Here we go, and let's watch our step. Here we go. Uh, being up here when the lightning starts is really not a good thing. And knowing this developer, getting struck by lightning might actually be a real possibility. I would not put it past them whatsoever. the bottom look look at the way the whole base just glows when a bunch of the lights are on at night before it was just a peep from the window now it's a whole thing all right let's lock you and get back over will that uh will the drone start coming on its own now it will I'll tell you what I can do in the meantime. Oh, there's no light in here. Uh, is grab yield bucket from the storage closet. And from here, I can fill that up with water. Oop, don't spill out too much. And I can hold this. Come on. Oop. And use that to scrub the grime on the wall away. There we go. Unfortunately... It is painfully slow. Investing in your space means really investing in your space. You gotta put the time in and nothing gets done quickly around here. Another one complete, a red dwarf in fact. And now that we have the ability to process up signals, we can do the very same for this. So let's save and save and put you here. Uh, and what we have the ability to do now is bring you over to this one and start processing you up, which is going to take some time, but it's well worth it, I think, in the end. And I believe that's probably our garbage bags arriving. So let's just move you out of the way. Ooh, careful of the, careful of the fuel. We know how volatile those things can be. Uh, and we'll put away the plastic scrap to be sold later. And grab all these. 
Now, it's kind of unprecedented for me to be doing this much cleanup this early on, but I think we should just start with immaculifying our play space. So we can go like that, bag all this ugly garbage up. And that will put it into a nice, neat form, unless that happens, which is kind of weird, uh, to be sold. And we can fit a ton of this in one box, so that's not going to be an issue. Ugh, there's so much that's just been wedged under the desk, and you are finished. So let's give you a listen. And as you can hear, that's a little bit better off than garbled static, but most times what you hear from space is, well, essentially nothing. And that's just how it's going to be, even when we're at, like, full levels. Well, anyway, it is garbage day. And this place is, in my opinion, starting to feel a little bit homier already. And we still don't have enough to get everything that's in this little basin over here. I mean, I swear, it's like my workers hate money. Co-workers, I mean. I wish they worked for me. The only one who works for me is Melvin, and yes, I do see the humor in being here for like a day and a half and already having an imaginary friend. Already my Fred to my Robert Neville. But wow, that's like 40 garbage bags already, and I'm not even done yet. And there's midnight just in time. And our job for the day is Yankee, November, and Oscar. And we need two signals of level one. So what we're going to do is just process you up. And that'll be our main job done right there. And that is the benefit of planning ahead. Sometimes I just think, with this new ambiance, what it would seem like if you were to play it over like a time lapse. Just a wide shot of this room, and all the things I get up to during the day, leaning back in the chair, adjusting something on the control panels, mopping the floors. It really does end up becoming a box that contains your entire life, for better or for worse. We can get some metal scrap, which is even more value for the item box, and send that how I, this is basically just cleaning up simulator at this point but the whole thing about this game is that it's whatever kind of simulator you want it to be oh, i got to get to grips with these controls still there was a mannequin up here we got a roach problem but there was there there was definitely a mannequin up here a second ago Actually, I have no idea when it would have gone. No, 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 no! There were two! I know for a fact that there were two right beside this bed before. I'm gonna have a real hard time sleeping tonight, I'll tell you that much. Close this. I think... I think I'm gonna be taking these reports in the morning. I don't feel like doing it right now. Let's turn out the lights as we go, although maybe not all of them just yet. Yeah, we've got an infestation for sure. Melvin's gone too. They all just went and dipped on me, which... <laughs> You know, I made fun of the idea that I'm losing my mind, but all of them ditching this early, I have to wonder, were they left here as a joke, or... Oh god, imagine if you could call up your co-workers and be like, oh hey, very funny leaving these mannequins all about, and they're just like, what mannequins? Alright, well, I want more metal scrap. See, sometimes cleaning is a way to keep busy, and sometimes it's just a coping mechanism. Oh my god, I just realized this window looks onto the adjacent stairwell. Somebody could have watched me come up that first night, and I would have had no idea. 
Nope, no you don't. No you don't. Ugh. Okay, well we'll just uh, forget about the fact that that happened. Forget about the fact that a lot of things are happening around here that are. And maybe I should just try catching more sleep. And uh, the sun is coming up. And we've got something on the edge of the property, which I will not be investigating at the moment. By the time I get there, it'll be gone. You hear that? I feel like there was just like the faintest whistle within that. Hang on, let's save you. I probably already have you saved, but just to be safe. Is that a trash bag? It is. We almost lost one. Okay, never mind. We're putting 45 trash bags on the pile. And we will call for the drone to come take it. But uh, I believe after that happens, we'll head out and grab our reports for the day. Uh, what have we got? Yankee, November, and Oscar. So where are those? What's our game plan? Once again, it's sending us to the periphery, but Yankee, November, and Oscar, that's actually a pretty neat loot. Yep, there we go, and we get 140 points worth of garbage. And I think we spent about 60, so that is not bad at all. See, this, this game now, I feel like it's gotten a bit easier, and a large part of that is certainly due to me having more experience with the mechanics. But also, like, this new base also gives you so much more at your disposal right from the get-go, if you just see it the right way. And it's a real different feeling looking out this door during the day. And look, with the view of the river right there, yeah, we can pretend this loading dock is our actual dock. Dangle our legs off the end and go fishing and you know, pretend we're retiring to our Kentucky cabin. And again, my thoughts of Project Zomboid have kind of put me off of ever living in Kentucky. Or make me want to stay there more, I don't know. Either way, we've got our own place to worry about and our own tasks to attend to. But doing it during the day, <laughs> that's another benefit of queuing up your jobs in advance. When you have them ready, you can wait until daytime to fix these things. I just hit Yankee, and next target, November. Which is going to be a little bit of a hike, but it's now that we're cresting this hill and can see a little bit more of the place. Maybe we'll try and do a little bit of exploring while we're at it. I mean, uh... That rock formation over there looks quite interesting. Let's see if I can get a good angle. And maybe we should hit that transformer up on that hill while we're at it. See, this is something that baffles me. I get that, you know, when you do a boring job, you get lazy. That happens. But how did my coworkers manage to, manage to infest such a distant outpost with trash? Unbelievable, and something you're at so infrequently on top of all that. Oscar, you are living the dream already of a beachfront property. I wonder, amid all the reeds and lily pads, could there perhaps be something hiding in this log over here? Hang on. Yeah, oh no. Well, that's going to be a bit difficult then. What I really need is the hook. What I really need is a lot of things. So many things that are so cheap and make all the difference in the world, but they're all just competing for your attention in this early game. This place is so much more childhood secret fort fantasies than it was before. But it also makes it seem so much more threatening on the way there, oh my god, uh, the hunger is starting early, it seems like. How damaged are you? Shouldn't be too much. Uh, you're running low on fuel. What's your health like? 97. Okay, but we've really got to eat something. I guess that roach last night didn't hit the spot. Oh, hey, I didn't even realize you're a burger. 
Oh, no, you're not. You're a hallucinogenic burger. <laughs> yeah, that's a thing that happens. Alright, well then, help me, oven burger. You're my only hope. Uh, hold. And each up. And we, we also need to rest soon, but that's okay, because all of our work for the day is done. So, what is our job for today? We need the two signals level one, and the sheet with all the hash codes, which we have all of. You guys go in, you guys go in, you two, and whatever else we get today will go towards the next day. And we are off to an insanely good start in this run. In fact, I think to quench our hunger, we deserve a reward. In my honest opinion, the best way in the game to get your food and your spirits up is to do what you do at home. Order yourself a pizza. The whole pie is yours. You don't gotta share a thing. I'm thinking about the pizza from last night that I have in the fridge right now, and I'm surely gonna be heating myself up a slice after this. Uh, but we also have a lot of room to upgrade ourselves. And so in, in the base game, or in the previous update, I kind of made perhaps the mistake of upgrading the processing levels all the way right away. But I think I'm gonna do that again this time. Because, hey, we need to listen to some level threes, right? It is now just about dinner time. And I know exactly what I want to order. We've got 307 points ready to go. That is so, so good for this early game. You have no idea. And we maybe could be a little bit more efficient with this, but that's just all the more incentive to increase our download speed. So let's start queuing up our orders. Uh, first things first, we want ourselves a slice of pizza. Uh, we can't make it pepperoni, which is what I like, but and maybe the default is pepperoni, I don't remember. We are going to get the crowbar, not only so that we can start spelunking the basement, but also so that we can start breaking open these boxes and not have to buy stuff for longer. And we'll make that order right now, and we're down to 217 to spend on upgrades. Uh, so what are some of the most useful things? Uh, I'm thinking automatic polarity direction, uh, which means that we're never going to have to figure out which of the three polarities we need. Uh, and from there... All processing level. And our last one into download speed. Uh, what, what, what is processing speed cost? Uh, a little bit more than we have. That's all right, we've got all the time in the world. We've got a whole bunch of signals in store. And I can't wait to start listening to them. They'll drift a bit during the rain. Uh, that's what some of you guys told me during the last playthrough, is that when it rains, the signal can get a little bit muddied, lose a little bit of track, and you kind of have to right the ship a bit. Uh, it can actually cause all kinds of jitters that make it hard to tell where exactly it is. But I do believe our our stuff is here. Let's just set this out on the table beside us. Have that magical moment when the pizza box opens for the first time. It is pepperoni. Um, num, num. And we can even save the other half for later. This is such a difference from the Survivor Man feel that I had the last ten times I started a game on this, but you know what? It's definitely a vibe all its own. And the cool thing about this is that I think everybody's game will go a different way. I was really, really frustrated with the mechanics the first couple of times I tried this, and while I did eventually get good, I do think that uh, there's maybe some value in watching this as your first video on the subject. And my other ones certainly aren't any good as a tutorial, uh, because a stronger start will kind of allow you to engage with it more. But even if you don't, like, if you come in with the right mindset, your path through the game being different from everyone else's just means that it's more your story. And it means the stories that happen to you will be more emergent. I really like games like that, where each one feels personalized. I think it's good that your character never speaks or replies back in emails, because what I found is that so much of the experience of this game depends on how you feel about things and what you perceive your role to be. 
I mean, there's nothing stopping you from completely ignoring this job and just making money as a garbage man hunting for cryptids in the woods. It's a lot to take in, and that can be overwhelming, but with there being a lot to take in, it also means there's a lot for you to do, and a lot of variety depending on you. And normally, this would be where I say, if you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. But you know what? I am nowhere near done at this stage. Keep getting woken up by loud, loud noises. And the walk back to the workstation is always a tense one. You never knew what you were going to see along the way, and... By making the base bigger, that feeling is just amplified. I really hate how this door is just propped open by things being too close. And it's just that dark gulf that I have to pass by every time. In my family's vacation place, there's this one bathroom that's always so dark when you're walking down the hallway at night. And as a kid, I always thought as I was passing by that Michael Jackson would reach out and grab me and pull me in as I was passing. I didn't even know anything about him being accused of anything, I just thought he was scary. Well, with nothing else to do for a little while, and this download taking forever. Maybe I should have put more points into downloads, but we're gonna have our first level 3 soon. And it's the Red Dwarf that had something weird at the tail end of it, I think. Let's go see what's going on in the basement. That should be our midnight save slash email arriving. And as much as I'd love to do this in the dark, let's put this up for safety. This would have had to have been knocked over before, right? Like, for me to interact with this door the way I did, it would have had to have been knocked over. So that's a creep... What just happened? The door's gone. Everything's open. Everything's just gone. What just happened to me? Even the light switches are gone. I can't turn anything on. The cricket seems so much louder. Even the slats in the, in the windows. Huh. What is happening to me? That's like the sound of the transformer shutting down. Oh, I knew I should have gone for that other one, but also, what is the deal with this? Uh, even the front desk is gone. Melvin, you and your boys come back and rob this place blind? There's not even stars in the sky. If I come this way, is there... There's no fences! What just happened to me? Well, at least we're back where there's a sky. That was bizarre. Oh no, I've got to run all the way back. I legitimately have no idea if that was a bug or not. It's exactly the kind of thing this developer would pull. All I know is that somehow I feel even more eyes on me from these trees than that very first night. And that's saying something. And this time I cannot run fast enough. You know what I'm realizing is that this is a game where your bewilderment is part of the horror. It's not about what you think might have happened, it's about not having any way to even conceive of what might have happened. Of being so utterly confused and drawing a blank on any potential theories. There was a lot going on there and just no way to parse it. I'm trying to cut through places to save time, but that's clearly not going to work. Now the next test is going to be, are we going to find any lights on? Answer, it doesn't seem like it. 
Oh no, the power's actually out entirely. That transformer really did go down, I think. Okay, well that means we're gonna head off in where I roughly think its direction is, but this is actually quite bad. Uh, I'm gonna grab some extra batteries from here just in case. Just when I was getting the hang of things, this gets all nerve-wracking all over again. If we come out this way, I believe that light over there is the central transformer. And that'll show us which one is down. Let's be careful. According to you, they're all still up. Hang on. I mean, I know one of them should be getting low right about now. Maybe we check the box in the basement. Maybe we can restore everything. Yeah, I'm just going to leave this here in case we need it again in a second. This faded painting of, or mural, I guess, of what this place was supposed to represent reminds me so much of, like, the murals in post-Soviet architecture. Makes me think of GM Krat, honestly. It looks like we're all up, but I'm not taking the chance. We're gonna see what's beyond here, and then we're moving on that Transformer tonight. Wow, these boards are tough. Okay, what is that? <laughs> that almost looks like a suppressor to me. Oop, a burger! Which I will happily consume. And the rest is just more under the stairs, but it was worthwhile. More space for us, right? And this is rubber trash, which is good. You can actually use that for a number of things. Right, are you back up and downloading? You are. Uh, let's use let's use this thing to find out which uh, which transformers are having problems. So TR check. Uh, actually, you're all doing pretty good. So something. <laughs> Something really strange happened to us, and it's the kind of thing that no one would believe, so why even bring it up? That's the crazy thing, is that, like, the wildest stuff will happen to you, and you're just expected to go right back to work. Speaking of our work, want to listen to our first level three? Haunting and terrifying. Every single sound from space means nothing and somehow everything. Let's start processing our next. And what's our next job? I'm not going to do it in this video, but uh, yep, one of level three, which we already have. Perfect. Let's just park you back in the bay. We don't want to leave you outside where you might get stolen. Who knows when Melvin and his boys will be back to completely clean this place out. But yeah, this update is so cool, and if you haven't played this game before, or even if you have, I just can't recommend it enough. There's just so much to it, and so much that you can make of it. And I think that's why it's going to end up having such staying power. That's why I was able to stick with it for 15 episodes in the previous series, and now... Well, it just feels like a whole new game. And if you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you think I should do, the best place to suggest that will be at the Discord, which I will link in the description. If you want to try this game out for yourself, that link will also be in the description. If you want to support me on Patreon, that link will be in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next one.